Welcome, City State 2 fans, to City State 2 with Omnius Prime. Um, episode 4, Economics for Dummies. Now, before I get into uh, uh, the exciting uh, discussion about uh, economics in City State 2, what I want to do is um, um, talk about highways first. So I set up a little demonstration here, and and uh, as you can see, I kind of have a tail of two intersections. <laughs> now, um, let's get into the road tool, okay, and that's the highway there, and that's the access road, or, you know, in, you know intersection. So now what you can see is that um, they can, ramps must be placed on highway and road intersections, okay? Now, the road is quite literal. You can't do it to, on, on an avenue, which is sad. Look what it does to the avenue when, when um, um, you try to connect. It changes um, a couple of hexes of the avenue um, into roads. So quite literally, yeah, you can't, it, it has to be done on roads. Now, let's look at the highway tool. Um, what I've done is I've, I've set up a, you know, my basic road grid with roads and avenues. I didn't do the streets. Uh, it's basically a six by six setup. So now if I go, uh, let's just say from right here, I go one, two, three. Now I'm gonna come down here and what I was doing was going basically five hexes. You can see how the little bottom of the plus sign I'm having um, um, go run parallel there. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, run this highway out here. Boom. Nice and simple. Connects real nice. Now I'm going to come up here and go one, two, three. Same thing. I'm going to take and connect this highway this way Whoop. there we go now it connects now here's something kind of interesting look how it connects um, um, the highways <laughs> I mean in one sense yeah it's cool it, it you know it does connect them and stuff but then when you look at, at at the intersection you know there's absolutely no traffic signals and stuff so I have to you know think that this is kind of like bumper car highway the intersection of death who will make it through alive and who will make it through but crash and burn so um <laughs> i don't know that just uh uh i, I just that 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 kind of just uh <laughs> yeah that's one of the reasons why i'm not using highways in in uh, uh my cities but i wanted to show you the highways so that um 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 you know, I'm, I'm trying to be complete about showing you how this stuff works. Now, placing these intersections, you know, the, the on-ramp, off-ramp, I mean, that's just super simple stuff, you know. So, kudos for him making very nice highway intersection um, interchanges that are pre-made. A shame that we don't have one for the avenue. I mean, I would much rather have the avenue than the road. Uh, because what I want is, I would want the highways to come off the avenues where you have the high capacity dumping into, say, maybe a higher capacity, okay? Because the highways are... Uh oh, now it doesn't want to... Let's see if it'll give me the cost, the capacity here. Hmm, now it doesn't want to show me capacity. Okay. No. Okay. Well, it's not going to show me the capacity when I want to show it to you. So, um, now here's another thing that I really didn't like about the highways. Um, let me set something up here. What I'm going to do is what happens if I, say, run the highways... Um, like say about one hex away from a road, okay? Or no, let's do it right here. 
and give me something like this. Now, let's put in an intersection right here. And uh, now it doesn't want to do. Hmm. Okay, there we go. Now, as you can see, it's it's eating the um, 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 the road up right there. Now, why isn't it doing? Hmm. Now that's an interesting concept that it doesn't want to quite do it, but I guess it's not liking that um, that avenue there. But here's the w but but let's get back to this is kind of one of the bad things that I why I don't like the the um, um, highways in is it was well, such, such a nice easy to to, to use um, intersection tool it has its drawbacks okay and then yeah I mean certainly you could come up here with the bulldozer and okay let's get rid of that come back Ooh here and connect and here and connect okay so yes and now look at and, and and now after I repaired the road look what it did to the highway okay that's what I wanted to show you and now it kind of screws up the highway so um, um, this is why you know you can't place it nice and tight like this um, now the other thing that it would do is create an intersection here like see here's an intersection now you've screwed up the intersection and then if I try to uh, uh, set it back up again it screws up the road <laughs> but it fixed the highway so yeah so there are limitations you can't like put it nice and snug to another road uh, or the highway I mean the avenue I still don't know why it's not going to let me put the um, the ramp there, but I guess because it's it's an avenue and not a road, it's not going to let me you know slice and dice up the avenue. So there are limitations on the highway um, because the traffic is representative, uh, like it is in um, um, Cities XXL. I was never. Um, um, impressed with with the highways in cities XXL uh, the intersections were kind of you know the, the uh, to the connect to the highways was really um, not very good um, not easy like this but um, the, rep the the simulated traffic flow just um, doesn't seem to work well uh, as far as just capacity uh, to draw people from say uh, um, the roads to the avenues or maybe you know the roads to the highways or the avenues and the highways so yeah I have decided that um, I, I just see no use um, to the way the um, um, roads are going to work I mean the highways are going to work especially with my um, whoopsie let's go back this way so if I was going to try to, you know, connect through here, you see how it kind of really messes with my uh, layout design. Or if I was going to try to, let's go back here and run the roads this way. And now you see it's going to be sitting right where I want to put a street here. Yeah, so um, um, yeah, maybe I could zone on this side of the, um, the road here and zone on this side and then zone on that side. But geez, now why can't I zone on that nice highway, which I mean avenue, which is what I would normally zone on. So uh, and uh, it would be wide enough for zoning like right here go to 144 come on multiples of 48 but if I wanted to try to put uh, let's see can I put a school in here okay but uh, I think that's about the things that I can put in there I don't know that 
see a library is that uh, yep it's big enough but there are some things obviously like this that just are n too big to slide in there um, I just didn't like the way the highways would fit in with my um, road design because as you can see one way it's kind of like messing up parts of of the um, um, where I can place buildings on the road because then what I'd have to do is uh, let's look just come here you see so I'd have to go to like 192 okay maybe I could stick uh, oh look at that and I could zone off the highway that's what and here it's preferring the highway to the road that's another no-no um, that, that shouldn't be and but I could go 48 that way you know but then again it's kind of like yeah I'd rather be on the road there um, one reason that I don't connect roads <clears throat> up like this is then you would really screw up the um, the roads here as far as traffic goes and then you would be pulling traffic onto roads and off avenues so this is why I do not do that now I'll be back in a moment and we're gonna start I'm gonna start talking economics back again in the city of Rossack and uh, right now it's got a population of uh, 1.552 million uh, almost 1.553 million and um, um, as you can see I'm running a liberal utopia now before my last set of um, policies that I enacted I was actually at a libertarian utopia now I just want to show you the traffic filter here is so nice and green check this out nine percent traffic congestion uh, you can see that the trains um, are, are transporting you know close to 60 percent of the people 55 60 percent of the people um, and that's just so awesome that's what brings the um, traffic congestion down to you know such a low number um, this stat screen has all kinds of good um, statistics over on the left hand side you can see stuff about the, the social ladder okay for like accessing um, um, the middle class you can see you have policies on employment various factors that go into affecting different classes for them to to uh, go up to the next class okay uh, along the top of from the center to the right you can see things like income inequality which right now shows zero birth rate 2.1 I think 2.2 is basically um, 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 uh, your break-even point corruption 4% it used to be around 11% but it, that has improved and your incarceration rate 0.05% um, here there's some things that affect population growth okay uh, like social ladder uh, seems like uh, definitely have a kind of a minus there on the uh, social ladder uh, which is interesting births are, are, are doing pretty good uh, and immigration now, like I said I, I really tried to uh, limit immigration so you can see the um, I'm really limiting the low class so yeah uh, that's really what I want to do you can see that I'm getting a lot of middle class and and a you know more upper class than lower class so this is why this city is so successful and profitable okay here you have under this uh, something called informal demand um, you have things like tax rates housing market civil rights economic freedom slums growth that affect all this stuff quality of life over here you know the kind of the, the happiness factor I'm at 97 out of 100 uh, security is at 86 out of 100 health 82 out of 100 environment I'm at 100 out of 100 parks 120 out of 100 so my total 97 out of 100 so I wanted to show you the stat screen now let's get into the big screen here the budget okay now 
on the top left quadrant, you have your basic um, um, class levels, lower, middle, upper. You have retail and office. You have basic manufacturing, advanced manufacturing, and property tax. So this is your tax structure. <coughs> your tax rates, you can just, uh, you know, click them either way. And you can see how um, um, adding tax will will reduce stability, okay? Uh, and oddly enough, lowering taxes uh, decreases stability a little bit. <coughs> so you don't want to be sitting there adjusting your tax, tax rates willy-nilly. So now the effect of my policies on, on, on uh, I guess, like uh, the income tax base is uh, like a negative 141,000. <laughs> but it, 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 you have your tax rate, you have demand. Like my retail shows a plus 6%, office plus 2%, basic manufacturing plus 2%, advanced manufacturing plus 2%. Okay. Then on the uh, column on the right, you have the approval. So I'm, I'm good with the lower class, minus one on the middle class and plus five on the upper class. Retail is plus one. Uh, your office, your manufacturing are, are even and property tax minus two. Um, you have to be careful about your tax rates. You can't um, run them down too low. Um, you want to, you know, you, you got to, to have a good city, you got to spend some money, okay? So you got to have a high enough tax rate to pay for stuff but you want to kind of keep your tax rate low enough so that um, 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 you don't um, um, mess up your economic growth. But you don't want to have your economy growing too hot, okay? Uh, I'm still not sure. Now, in the bottom in the middle, you have uh, things like unemployment, 1.3%, demand, 3.7%, exchange rate, 0.1% and inflation 5.1%. So I'm not sure if these things, oh, they do add up. Okay, so unemployment plus demand is 5% and exchange rate 0.1%. Okay, so here 3.7 of the 5.1% of inflation is dedicated to demand, which means that what I probably need to do is raise tax rates, okay, to reduce the demand. Now, my unemployment of 5% adds 1.3% of that 5.1%, so it's a hefty factor. My playing around with the exchange rate is, is minimal effect on the inflation rate. So this is really neat how he's done this, <coughs> and you can actually see what factors go into what makes up inflation? Let's come over here to the bot to the top right. Okay, now we have the expenses. So as you can see, I'm spending 880 on government. So I'm not spending much on government. Education, 176,640. Health, 118,140. Security, 57,955. Water, 252. Energy, 44,400. Transportation, 85,404. And that's probably a pretty good bargain considering that my uh, traffic congestion rate is 9%. Parks, 47,180 dollars. Um, yeah, you know, I like to keep the people happy and it helps to build up um, property value. Now here's an interesting thing that I love. You have national contribution, and you have the national tre treasury. Right now, my national treasury is sitting at sixty-four million seven hundred sixty thousand um, um, city state dollars. Okay, CSD, city state dollars. Now, my my national contribution, a positive value, will send a part of the city's income to the national treasury. A negative value will withdraw money from the nation's treasury to finance the city. So what I like to think of this national's treasury is like a slush fund, okay, like a, a, a savings account. Now you're not going to make any money on it, but a rainy day fund, okay. 
So right now, I, I, I picked this so that, that I could have um, um, the plus 28% national contribution level. Uh, the basic uh, um, normal is 12%. And what I found is this percent really is almost meaningless because when you go into a city, you can o always transfer money from or to the national treasury. So, uh, so like early in the game, I might do like negative 5%. And borrow just a little bit of money when I'm first starting a city to keep it going but what I don't want to do is is overdo it okay um, and burn up my national treasury so you got to be very careful about you know on the financial side of things that um, let me set this back to 5% again and you can see that 39,795 would be going from my city funds to my um, um, national treasury. Now, here you can see at the bottom right, you got total income, 795,899. Total expenses, 736,902. And yes, the national contribution is part of my total expenses. So my net cash flow, okay, is 58,000. Nine nine seven. Um, you know, once you get in any city building game, once you build up your population, um, yeah, you're just going to make money. Now, I'm also playing this on the easy level. So, um, um, this was, like I said, my first map of learning the game and stuff. So, yeah, this has been very simple uh, financially. Uh, my next map, I, I want to um, um, go into... Um, either the medium or hard level um, and start a new city at a, at, a, at a higher difficulty level and then see if I can pull off the trick of um, um, using nothing but um, avenues and roads and, and the tree-lined streets um, to start a city rather than the gravel roads. So this is, I, I mean, it, it, the economic structure of this of, of this game is is excellent okay um, I'm an accountant I've been an accountant for 40 years so playing these kind of games are um, um, <laughs> it, you know easy for me man I mean this is just kind of like what I do for a living and uh, so yeah I think Andy's done a very good job with the um, um, the policies and having effects on on um, um, the various um, um, aspects of society, the economy, the government. Um, this was well thought out, and then um, g giving us these custom policies um, is really interesting, you know, because then we can do some, you know, roll your own. Like, like what I did here, you know, here, here was my first one where I'm boosting up the education. And uh, it cost me 11181 One thing that, that I wish would happen is, is that these, somehow we could do the approval ratings. That we could, uh, or that somehow as we're setting these factors, it would automatically affect the um, approval rating so we get some kind of reading on the 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 right left uh, approve or disapprove so that would be the one thing that um, um, I think the custom policies need is an improvement now speaking of improvements um, there is going to be a new update coming out in a very short period of time probably by the end of March and um, so I'm going to be waiting to start a new city um, until that update comes out. Now, one of the reasons why I um, um, waited on that was to, um, um, you know, I wanted to wait to do a new city with the new map coming out. So this test map, you know, I built a lot of cities. What I did was I wanted to learn how to um, play the game. So let's get uh, some clock running here. 
Now, one of the things I like is, um, um, and wow, there's just, uh, <laughs> oh, hey, there's a car or truck. So, um, oh, it's an ambulance. Cool. Now, one thing you can't do since this is simulated traffic, you can't, like, click on something and then follow the vehicle around. Um, or you can't click on pedestrians and, and follow them around. So what, so, so what Andy's done here is um, simplified the way the city runs by not having what, what some call agents in their games. Uh, where you're tracking specific people, and uh, uh, I find that, that that doing that, it's just too much information, TMI. Uh, I really don't care what Joe Blow is doing, or Jane Doe. Um, um, I'm more interested in the overall effects of, of how the city's going to run and stuff. Now, I did try to um, um, add a few hospitals and prisons and uh, police stations and stuff to kind of boost up my uh, security and uh, um, especially my health. Because the health is what really helps people to um, want to move in. Now, let's see. Did I do... There was something here. Yes, an approval screen here. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you here. So now here we can see the approval screen in, in right down here. That's where it, what pulls it up, okay? So what you have is approval from the left, approval from the right, okay? You can see that uh, I guess my overall approval from the left is 72%, and from the right it's 51%. So it uh, gives me, you know, an approval rating overall of 68%. Um, so we have 79% political affiliations, 21% right-wing uh, political affiliations. And you can see that various things um, 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 affect approval. Policies, tax rates, unemployment, inequality, civil rights, environment, health, education. And so this gives, so, so I guess right here on inequality I'm scoring really high uh, on the left. Now on the inflation, <laughs> I'm scoring really low on the right. So what I'd have to do is, so look at my tax rates, 35% on both sides. So, you know, I probably have to raise tax rates a little bit. Um, the unemployment looks pretty good. Economic freedom, and it's, it's kind of dogging it at 20% on the right. You know, it's, uh, uh, oh, I see there's different kind of factors, economic freedom isn't a factor on the left, but it is on the right. That's an interesting concept, okay? Inflation, they both, nope, they don't have inflation. Uh, so stability, okay, they like stability, and I've done a very good job on the stability, okay? Uh, see, the civil rights, I'm at uh, 95, so that gives me a 62% on, um, uh, on the left. So yeah, I mean, this has really been very well thought out. Um, um, now, you got government types. So we have things like if we go on to the left-hand column, a free market dictatorship, capitalist dictatorship, corrupt dictatorship, fascist dictatorship, dystopia. Okay, that's bad stuff. Come way over here onto the far right, you have uh, at the top a utopia, libertarian utopia, liberal utopia, right in the middle there, socialist utopia, and then communist utopia. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just funny. I've been an elitist republic here in the middle, um, so I see civil rights going from zero, so yes, to, to, so this is why I'm in a utopia, because I guess on my civil rights I'm really high up, okay, so, so I'm here on the right-hand side um, in the utopia area, because of the civil rights. So it's really interesting how all of this is, is scoring, so let's just take a look at, here's some more statistics, this is the, uh, oh, the population, okay, and here's the economy, now, here's something that's really cool. Okay, residential at the top left here, 
feeds into the retail, okay? Retail feeds into basic manufacturing and also advanced manufacturing. Basic manufacturing and advanced manufacturing lead to office growth, okay? So here you have all the various factors Number of jobs will be created uh, in the retail sector for every new uh, uh, person. 0 0.08, 0 0.12, 0 0.13. So not much difference between middle and, and, and higher class. Uh, so my total growth bonus on the retail is 15%, 6% from taxes, 9% from policies. That gives a 0.58 uh, jobs that will be added to the demand for basic manufacturing or 1.89 which is a really good factor for advanced manufacturing so this is the first game where I've ever really seen demand explained in um, um, a coherent intelligent manner um, Andy um, hats off to you this is really uh, this is really a, a, an excellent job of how you've shown this this um, little chart kind of thing with statistics and you show the flow the flow chart yeah of, of, of demand so we can actually see and understand what drives the growth bars now as you can see I'm like you know fully populated but my growth bars are, are pretty much just maxed out uh, and you can see my jobs I mean just this is great uh, here you see inflation is, is, is dropping advanced manufacturing by minus 40%, but education is popping it up 84%. Shows you how important education can be. Basic manufacturing, now, of course, there's the flip side. I love this, you know. So the, the, the highly educated, now that hurts basic manufacturing. And here my high inflation um, helps basic manufacturing. Okay, and then you have taxes at 2% for each one. Policies minus 11 on the basic and plus 5 here on the advanced. Um, so you can see, I mean, this is just so well thought out. And then here from advanced manufacturing, you have 2.16. And from basic, you have the same 2.16 to pump up office. Okay, and here office, uh, economic freedom. 4%, education, 34%, that's interesting, taxes, 2%, policies, 5%, so your total growth bonus is 44%, advanced manufacturing has a total growth bonus of 51%, and your basic manufacturing has a total growth bonus of uh, minus 54%, but uh, that's okay, you know, the, I, I saw, you know, there's lots of little sayings when you're loading up the cities, there's little uh, um, help tips and stuff that run across the screen. And, um, um, uh, yeah, you know, they they talk about, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff, but to see this uh, laid, the demand laid out in such a coherent, intelligent manner, wow, this is just great. Here's your inflation. You see, once again, how it, the factors pick it up. I have, uh, I guess, something over a million jobs because that's a thousand and ninety three thousand oh I have jobs in other cities uh, three point two percent I have five and a half five point six thousand potential jobs I'm um, gonna stop the clock for a moment unemployed I have forty six thousand okay I added another seven thousand while that clock has been running and the participation rate is uh, seventy four percent uh, let's see, participation rate in the United States currently is around 62.5%. So you can see that my participation rate is pretty awesome here in Rossack. <clears throat> jobs distribution here, you have uh, a, a bar graph that shows you the jobs distribution between retail, office, basic manufacturing, advanced manufacturing. Very little government jobs, you know, service and government jobs. <clears throat> GDP nominal is uh, woo, whoa, 1.1. That's 111,097 million. So that's like over a billion. 
GDP per capita, 71.2 thousand. GDP growth, zero. Now let's see, let's look at our approval. We saw that and we saw the, ch oh, charts. Uh, here you have political leaning. Oh, I see population. So let's see, population. Oh, let's go to yearly. There we go. Now we can see uh, 24 years ago, 12 years ago. So we can see our population growth. So here you have some graphs, okay? Now if I want to, maybe I want to look at lower class, okay? You can see how it kind of topped out here. And uh, the lower class grew very little. Here's the middle class, and you can see how it's starting to top out. And now the upper class, and yeah, it's kind of topping out too, because yeah, my, um, So I had it real low, and then it popped up again. So I've got like about uh, 8,596 and slum dwellers, which tells me that what I really needed was a little bit more um, 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 in um, um, public housing. So that just kind of is a great way to, to show me that, yeah, I needed some more public housing. Uh, I was doing a great job here for a while and then kind of slacked off on it. Um, population growth. Let's see. Let's look at the approval. It's been pretty straight line, it looks like. Uh, economic freedom. That looks kind of straight line. So, and that looks kind of straight line. So you got all these kind of different graphs, okay? Let's go back to the population one for now. And then down here on the bottom, uh, to center and right, you've got like political leaning, religiousness. Now you can see that, that I got a nice secular state. And, but you see, I mean, I do try to put in a little bit of religious stuff just to help with that birth rate. Um, you can see my social classes. And you can see the immigration local-born, uh, foreign-born, undocumented. So it doesn't look like I have much in the way of undocumented. Um, so I hope that um, 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 is a good explanation of economics for dummies and a few other things. And I think maybe I'll pop back in to, to do a... Um, uh, a little wrap-up segment and do a little helicopter ride or something cool like that. I just wanted to kind of summarize everything that I've been through um, um, in this episode on these charts that uh, show us a lot of good stuff, uh, like this is the population chart. There's one new addition here. Um, down in the bottom, you see uh, like, uh, you know, a car, a person walking, the bus, the train. And then over on the far right, you see what looks like a building. Well, there's going to be a new statistic about intercity travel. So this building with the arrow uh, to the right is going to signify uh, measure um, um, intercity travel. So um, since we have multiple cities, we will now have intercity travel. So this was just a really well done um, um, game. And then like the economy statistics with this beautiful flow graph that shows the demand, um, how demand is, is influenced for your businesses, okay? Uh, that is just really good. And like on the top right here, your inflation the components of the inflation, uh, where it shows me that, that 3.7 of the 5.1% is demand. So what I have to really is, is, redu is increase my tax rates a little bit to reduce my demand to reduce the inflation rate. And maybe have um, um, increase my inflation rate a little bit, uh, I mean my unemployment rate a little bit, so that um, 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 we can go ahead and, and uh, help lower the uh, inflation rate. So, um, now here's an interesting thing about, okay, 
jobs in other cities. So I have 3.2 thousand jobs in other cities. So I have people traveling between cities. Potential jobs. This is an interesting number. Jobs that would be could be created if on current demand were used into new businesses. Uh, so it shows me what. Now it says higher than the number of unemployed in a healthy economy. Now I have a healthy economy, but I only have 7.1 thousand potential jobs while I have 46.9 thousand unemployed. You know, and I have that high participation rate of 73.9 percent. So, um, um, so I do have to disagree here that I do have a healthy economy, even though my potential jobs show lower than the unemployed, okay? Um, and one of the things you want to do is you want to try to, you have to keep strive for a balance. You're never going to, in a full employment economy, in the classic sense, unemployment at 4% signifies a full employment economy. There will always be people unemployed, so you just have to factor that in. You want to take care of the unemployed, not too much, but you want to take good care of them. The most important thing is they can will become consumers, okay? So you want to give money to poor people so that they become consumers, especially in an economy that is consumer-based, <coughs> like the U.S. economy is now. <clears throat> we used to be the arsenal of the democracy because we used to do our own manufacturing and manufacturing for around the world. But we've uh, unfortunately outsourced that to um, um, China. So now, what we have to do is look at the uh, approval here. One of the things that I'm noticing here, like I told Andy, is that after I built the state uh, media center, I, I never saw that 10% um, um, media boost. And I'm looking through the various things that, that affect approval from the left and approval from the right. The one thing I don't see is state media. So it almost seems like, you know, there's room here for one more item on each side. So maybe what Andy needs to do is add in state media and it will give some kind of percentage uh, boost right and left um, um, so that we really do get the approval ratings um, um, from the state media, the, uh, the approval rating boost of 10 points that um, um, it, that building is supposed to give. The other thing I noticed here is, okay, I, I finally kind of looking at this graph now. <clears throat> On the left, you have um, the economic freedom going from top, uh, bottom to top, 0 to 100. And then on the bottom, you have um, um, the civil rights axis going from 0 to 100. So it's 0 civil rights and 0 economic freedom. You have dystopia down at the bottom left at near 100%, 100 in civil rights and 100 in economic freedom, <coughs> you reach utopia, okay? So what had happened is, well, I was a libertarian utopia. I passed some policies that dropped my economic freedom, and that dropped me into the liberal utopia. Uh, so yeah, I just love the way Andy laid this game out. And um, um, there are going to be some new improvements coming. And very, very shortly. And I'm really excited about that. Um, I was really, really pleased that I could build a city with such wonderful traffic, con you know, lack of traffic congestion. And I've also noticed that sometimes, you know, it's kind of almost like you have uh, uh, almost like a time of day differential. Sometimes, like here, it now, sh whoopsie, shows my traffic congestion at 23%, okay? <coughs> Whereas there was a while there that I was at 9%. So it seems like there's um, <coughs> um, an ebb and flow to the traffic congestion. 
but a high of 23% compared to my um, 63 rating in um, uh, my first city of Omnius Prime. Yeah, I really like the way I did the um, underground rail. And it was the underground rail that uh, I owe all the success to for my... Um, um, and as you can see, you know, I've got the, the little underground trains running along. There's one zipping away. So, yeah, I really, really just... And, and the grid pattern for the um, um, <clears throat> underground rail system, you know, I laid it out just like my, my bus pattern. So this is kind of a, a, a cool view. <laughs> where you can kind of see the underground rail system running. You can see some of the traffic and stuff going on the roads. Um, well, there's very little traffic going on the roads because of this uh, underground rail system. But, um, yeah, I just, once I figured out how to do the underground rail, it just makes so much sense. And it, it just, yeah, it makes so much sense to just flatten the map. So I'm going to be back in a moment, and I'll do a quick little helicopter cruise around the city for just a little joyride. In summation, I hope that you've uh, enjoyed this Economics for Dummies episode, and that you enjoyed the other Four Dummies episodes, where I try to um, um, explain various important aspects of the game, since there is no um, um, manual or uh, wiki page that... that tells us these things. I've tried to go through all of the important aspects of the game and um, give you a good rundown of how things work. And hopefully uh, my horrible flying here, I won't crash into any buildings or anything silly like that. Even though the, uh, the fireball looks kind of cool. <laughs> but um, um, I really like the way Andy has done a really nice job of um, um, those charts and the information. If you really pay attention to the charts and stuff, you'll find that this is an interesting game of balancing. So you, it, it's give and take in, in, in so many different ways that um, um, this is what I really find interesting about the game is the challenge of the give and take. Now, let's just see if I can fly through the middle here. Ooh, and not, uh, and not run into anything. Whoops. <laughs> As you can see, that, uh, that didn't last long. And so here I am um, um, revving it up again. And there's the plane on the tarmac right there. Well, the, the tarmac that we don't see, that is the airport. Um, so here I am back up in the sky again. Let's try this again. Um, this is why I do not play flying games, as you can see. Um, woo. Okay, now I'm really going crazy here. So let's ease it on back again. Trying to go down one of these um, um, avenues here to avoid those big arcology seas. So let's just see if I can't get uh, in between these arcology bees. I'm passing over an A right now, but those aren't the problem. It's the um, those taller arcology bees that uh, that get this. So um. I hope that you've enjoyed the series and that you will um, come back. My next video, um, I'm going to wait until the new version comes out, which should be by uh, the end of March, early April. And then what I want to do is start a new map, start a new capital city from scratch. And I'm actually going to show you how I do that without uh, building with gravel roads, hopefully. And do it on uh, either the medium or the hard level so that, uh, um, um, you know, make this a, a little more of a challenging game. This was done on the easy level uh, because this was my first map and I had to learn how the game works. So, until my next video, I hope that all of you have a great time.